Hello, I'm Madeline Tynan from the Tynan Motor Group and I'm here with Troy Phillips from First Point. How are you today? I'm well, thanks. Lovely to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. Another amazing local business that we're going to be talking to today to empower you. How did you get hit with this horrible virus? What happened in business? Well, I think uh, is it, it could be day 35 of lockdown, but memory was, was about four weeks ago, I think. Mm, we sort of got a bit of a whiff of it six yeah. weeks ago, and then we, you know, typical Australians, we and didn't I think, think it was going to be so hard. On the Sunday, we got inundated with Scott Morrison, and I think everybody took it pretty seriously. Like we'd, we'd heard about it, it wasn't going to affect mm. us, so we were mm. all going to go to the football, we were willing to shake hands and go to restaurants. And on that Sunday, I think we realised it, uh, it was real, and people started to change the way they were. Offices are shut down, people work from home. And I think through that week, it, um, it got pretty real when, mm. um, and mm. when they started to close pubs and clubs and in the hospitality industry, I think people stood up and took notice. Mm. Um, from there on, it's, um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, nothing we've ever seen before. Troy, did your phone go nuts? Obviously doing people's mortgages and then with their businesses, everyone sort of went, okay, where do we step? What do we do? First thing we did in here is ring our bank and sort of start looking at our mortgages in, for our own family. Did your phone go nuts with people wanting to do that? Yeah, it did. We've, got a, we've, got a, we've been doing the shy for 13 years mm. or 14 years now. So um, on that Monday, it was... Um, I've never seen anything like it. And I've been through a GFC, you know, yes, uh, yeah. you know, a banking royal commission and a lot of other things. But it was actually real because it wasn't it wasn't affecting corporates. It wasn't affecting big banks or, mm, or the everyday it, person. It, it was really. people who were worried about paying their mortgage. It was big big businesses that were good businesses that revenue was reduced from, you know, hundred percent down to ten percent trying to work out what they did. So it was uh, it was I've never seen anything like it. The phones Did the were, banks reach out to you too to say like you know, like you're, yeah. you, we've got Macquarie, you've got St George. Yeah, we do, with all, we do with all the major banks. I've got to say, the Australian banks really stood up. They're in a really strong position because of the, you know, the Royal Commission. Mm, mm. And I think for the first time ever, they've been fantastic corporate citizens. Um, you know, the Commonwealth Bank, while they were bashed pretty heavily, you know, a year ago, they've really stepped up to look after their clients and all the other banks have as well. Um, so have I think, most people put them on hold? Is that the way they're moving not, not or, most people, or just getting ready? I think a lot of people, if they can, are still paying their mortgage yes. because it's when you're on hold, the interest capitalises. So if people have still got a job and they can afford it, nothing's changed. For people that have actually been stood down, which is a new word, whoever heard of the word stood yeah, down, it was stood um, I've been stood down or had their salaries reduced significantly. I think we've worked with them to put their mortgages on hold for three months at the start and then look at doing it for um, six months. Plenty of uh, businesses and large businesses, we've had to go in and renegotiate the terms of their agreements with the banks. Mm. Banks have been fantastic. I, I can't believe how they've been inundated with hardship claims and even the, the small business um, claims. And I can't believe they've managed it so well. The major thing I've been seeing in business is that one business is reaching out to another business to say, hey, are you OK? Yeah. And that seems to be the way that we've done it. Have you had to stand down any of your staff that way? or, or? No, we, we made a... Um, we made it uh, a bit of a commitment on the way through that we wanted to, that we wanted to sort of keep it business as usual. We didn't want to have customers in the office. We obviously have the social distancing, but we we, we adapted to um, mm. technology that we would have probably yes. gone to five years ago. We embraced within about uh, five days, so that's worked well. All the lenders we deal with have gone to doing um, online, online identification, etc. So mm. that's worked really well. So it's almost we've become a hybrid. We actually do a lot of stuff digitally now that we would have like like the relationship. We're a relationship business like you guys. Yes. But we've embraced that, so it's worked well for people that needed to speak to us ASAP, needed to do things ASAP. Digital signatures, et cetera, have become the norm instead of like, oh, what's mm. this? How do I use it? Everybody's mm. using that. So we embraced that pretty quickly, and we had to. As far as other businesses go, it was more about looking after the people that needed help straight away. So you prioritise people, because there was people that, you know, you look at the airline industry, a lot of the people in the Shire were employed in the airline industry yes, and travel. Yes, that big, was, big that was hit really hard. Mm. I'm also involved in um, in the hospitality industry as well. So that was an industry where we, we tried to keep everybody employed to a certain point. Um, so you're, you, pardon me, just interrupting you, but you've got, you're involved in a pub. I'm involved in a pub as well. I, you know, I don't get to pour beers. I spend a lot of time standing <laughs> on the other side of the bar. So I was, uh, I was good at that. That's industry. It's been hit heavily, but I think the job keepers been able to help businesses keep people attached in the, in the hospitality industry and keep those businesses to be able to run their payroll still. Yes. I mean, it doesn't cut in until the 1st of May. But the, Did you have internationals working for you? We, in... And that's the sad thing. We did have a lot of internationals right. working for us. We've got uh, three particularly that we've kept the bottle shop going and kept a takeaway service going. But whilst that's innovation 
it doesn't pay. It doesn't pay. Doesn't pay the bills. No. It, it makes you feel good, but eventually it. Uh, We've got to have a solution. It's the Balmain Hotel in Balmain. So when we open up, come down there. Come it's got down a beer garden. It'll be a great place to see you. But um, that's just an industry that's... We've got a lot of customers in the hospitality industry as well, of, of pubs and that sort of stuff. And, and as we were talking about before we went to camera, the clubs and that sort of stuff, the big league clubs and everything else, they, they do a lot for the community. They put a lot back. They they're do. hurting. They do a lot of And the they employ donations. a lot of people. Yep. yep, and a lot they help a lot for not-for-profits as yeah, well Yeah, 100%. Too. While some people think it's going to go back and be one big party, like, you know, when we won the Olympics or mm -hmm. the America's mm -hmm. Cup or... You know, New Year's Eve. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be a different world we go back yeah. into. I think the word coming out in that is is the taking out tables between tables, social distancing, bigger tables so they can have a distance around each one. So yeah. if you had a hundred in your in your restaurant, it'll be down to fifty. Yeah, and I don't think you know being served by someone with a face mask on that can't interact. I, I think the whole experience is going to be a little bit different. Um, and, and you, talk, you, you talked about technology though. That's a massive thing. Where did you get the technology from to move so quickly and be so agile? We always had we always had technology, um, and we were capable. It's just a lot of the lenders didn't it, want to embrace it, so we had to work in the old way. Um, so the bigger banks and that always had technology they could switch to, but I just think they didn't need to and they didn't want to because it suits everybody's model to keep. So the what norm. about cyber crime then? That, um, I believe that's a big thing that's happening at the moment. Everyone's looking into cyber crime and making sure because we're going so quickly and everything's changing so quickly that we've got to be extremely careful there. One hundred percent. I think people are downloading like uh, when you do your internet banking, you get numbers. You know, for for larger stuff, you have to go in and get a number and go in, and it's encrypted. And I think there's that new MyGov ID website that's right. encrypted. So I think a lot of people had that encryption and they had it ready to go and they've switched it on. I think there's always going to be some sort of someone who's going to try to find their way around it. Yeah. I think it's getting harder than it was. I mean, I used to look back, you, you know, you used to go on a trip to America and see people identity theft and we thought, well, that will never happen in Australia. Mm. It just wouldn't happen. And then all of a sudden we had people stealing credit well, you, cards and licenses right. out of letterboxes. And, yes. and you saw it, it even went to the police. The police got, uh, yeah. had cybercrime. So, yeah, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I think that there's going to be challenges there down the track. Um, but I think we're probably a long way forward than we were back um, when we first started uh, with identification theft, etc. So your business, obviously, with the mortgage broking, etc. Have you noticed a downturn in people actually asking for new mortgages? Would you say there's a downturn? I know they're saying between twenty and thirty percent that it's going to hit the uh, real estate industry. Yeah, is I, that what you're seeing coming through? I think we match that. I think we match the real estate industry. I think that the uh, the world has. I mean. I don't think now's the time to sell and push because I think people want reassurance. So your job's to service your existing clients and service ones that are committed to buying a property. There's still people buying. I think a lot of first homeowners um, are still buying property. Right. Um, and I think the real estate agents are better to, better to tell you about that, but they've had an approval there and they've gone in and they've bought. Um, they're not in industries that are at risk. Right. Um, and I suppose they're young enough to think, well, if anything happens, I can bounce back. I've got, yeah, you know, time. I've got three more cycles in the world to get through it. Mm -hmm. um, you, you obviously cater not just for the St George and Sutherland area. Have you noticed in the outer areas of Sydney that we're different in any way, we, being in the St George and Sutherland area? I think we've been, um, I think we've been hit a little bit harder because a lot of our people are involved in the hospitality industry and they're involved in the travel industry at the at the mm. bare bones. Mm. Whether it's um, you know airlines, whether it's air transport, whether it's um, you know they're involved in um, pubs and clubs. So I think it has it, it's hit us. I think we're a more entrepreneurial area. A lot more people in the Southern Shire, uh, they're willing to have a go. That's right. They're a lot of people own their own businesses and yeah. have come up from nothing. And, yeah, 100%. And, and we've built some, there's some magnificent stories. Like, you know, you guys are one of, you know, the, the Tyner Motor Group. And that's not just because I'm sitting in front of you, but there's a hundred there's a hundred of those stories. And you just look around Tarrant Point of family built businesses. Oh, definitely. That have been built on, on the back of a, an idea like two generations ago. Mm. And I think... Mm. Um, they didn't cater for this, and they're not—they're not massive corporates. So this is this is hurting them, and it's well, I tend to, you tend to run lean and mean anyway. One hundred percent. Most most of the family-owned businesses or, or um, the entrepreneurs within the Shire tend to run pretty lean. We're not yeah. sort of big flashy businesses. No. We tend to just run lean and mean. But I think that also means that we can manoeuvre quicker. Yeah, I think we can. I think, and I think the staff are loyal. The staff feel like it's mm. a family, so they're willing to understand if, you know, if you go and have a chat to them about this is what we need to do. Mm. They realise it's tough, and I think, I think staff, 
I generally really realise and they appreciate they've got a good business they work in. They're not in a corporate where they've just put a line through them. Mm. They want to be a part of it and they understand it's tough times. So I think they're lifting as well. So how are you keeping those lines of communication open to your staff? Like, are they all working from home or are they coming in? Are they sharing? What are they doing? We have some that work off-site and we have people in the office working. We've got a pretty good workspace for that. So um, I, think it's, I think it was important to try to keep, you know, being banking and finance was an essential service. I think it was important to try to get people coming in and communicating not just about work, but about their situation. Because my, my thought was psychologically, if someone was at risk, they, they, they weren't to come in. But I think psychologically, it was good to have people coming in because everybody's having, you know, as yes, we, we discussed, yes. like, I think last Wednesday, it sort of hit me, I was missing, I'm a social beast and I was, I was flat as a biscuit. I was missing my, you know, a fortnightly Chinese and a couple of beers with the industry pe people to catch up with some chat. That's right. I think that's the thing that's I miss. That's where a lot of business is done, I, I, really. Yeah, I miss the most is the interaction with people. Mm, mm. And you can call them on the phone or when you're in the car or when you're at the office to get updates, but I think I'm, I'm missing the social interaction. I think that's a, where what I was getting to is that at the moment, a lot of people are working at, from home. And at the moment, as we were saying before, it's beautiful weather, it's quite nice to walk outside, walk around your backyard, come back in and start working. Uh, and we notice with Zoom and a lot of the meetings that everyone's happening is they there's a social um, cutoff point. Yeah. And if it goes on too long, a meeting goes on too long, people are cutting off. I, that's where I'm worried about people when we all come back. What, what's going to happen then? They're all missing that social side of it. We need it because you, know, you sit in a boardroom and you run a meeting the meetings are a lot short. Everybody goes, that's really, it's efficient for people that can't read human nature. Mm. But at the end of it, there's voices and there's photos popping up everywhere. And it's like, I actually can't delve into this because there's someone else I need to ask a question. There's two people that can add value. Mm. Mm. But I need to get off this line because it's actually driving me nuts. Mm, so I think right. while it is is efficient in ways, it's um it's inefficient in that you can't read the room. Yes, that's right. Um, exactly. And can't and see the facial yeah, expression. Yeah, you can't see the facial expression. You can't delve into a problem by the... By 25 minutes, a meeting it probably should have taken 40 minutes. Mm. You need out because it's like, oh, I can't yeah, get to the I end know. of this. I can't answer the question. We're not going to get anywhere. We just need exactly to get to the right. end. And I think people are just wanting to make conversation sometimes. Oh. I know my staff um, said, like, it's so nice just to ask a question, walk away and deal with it. Yeah. Whereas you'd have to make a special Zoom meeting. Do you know? It's a lot quicker um, just being able to walk in and have a chat with someone. Exactly. And I think a lot of businesses that thought offshoring was the best thing. I know some, some larger corporates. Mm. Um, that think offshoring was the way to go. And they're looking back now and you ring someone and you've got a rooster fight in the background and it's like, well, maybe this isn't the way to do it. Mm. They don't share the same values. They don't, you know, some of these countries aren't placing as a uh, big emphasis on how you manage COVID. The people don't get that you you can't you, you can't pay them the same as they were. Like, you know, big Definitely. companies in India, India, you know, there's big big accounting firms in, they've got back offices in India and that, that the, the staff expect to be paid the same and nothing changes even though the workloads come down by 70%. A lot of them are just closed. Yeah. So in going forward, I mean, there's got to be something that's empowering us and making us want to be better for when we come out of this. Yeah. At the moment, you've changed a lot of different things. Obviously, going online, um, you've got two children working from home, adult children. Um, what do you think you're going to take out of it to become a better business and a better business leader when we come out, like hopefully we'll come out slowly um, in a big in a big way, slowly but big way. What what do you think you'll take out of it? I've always expected, like always, say to people, when it's too good to be true, it generally is. And you know, you and I have seen some some pretty big downturns. Mm. Um, the GFC didn't affect Australians generally day to day, but it affected our big banks, and it was managed well by the government at the time in you know oh nine oh eight oh nine. I think. Um, You've got to expect that it won't just be a financial change or anything else that affects business. Um, something like a pandemic, which none of us would have looked at, it was always like, what are interest rates? What's the Australian property market? Australians are very interested in property and interest. Mm. Um, and I was talking to a young fund manager and I said, something's going to give here. I just had a gut feel that something was going to give. I never thought it would be a pandemic. Mm. And when it hit, it hit fast and it's affected everything very globally. Fast. It's affecting a lot of businesses. Um, you know, Virgin for, for once was probably, you know, a business that was carrying too much debt anyway. It was always going to always going to struggle and it'll come back out because we need another airline. But I just think you've got to expect the unexpected. Um, when it is too good to be true, it generally is, you know. Yes. I always look at it and say, look, when you look next door and there's pretty average people and they're overperforming, it's, the market's generally pretty good because good companies will do well and do better in good good, good business. Yes, definitely. You, know, I, you notice that with your own staff too. Yeah. The ones that, you know, that when, it, when you've got a great product and it's selling yeah. hot and it's hot and then when it goes off, the cream always rises to the top. 100%. I think you'll find that Staff will appreciate to work in a good environment. It won't just be about what are you going to pay me, what are you going to do. There'll be loyalty. 
and employers will realise the staff that lifted throughout this and they, get, they go, you, you know what, I always take someone who's, uh, you know, they've got seven really good points out of ten, but you know you can, you can mask yeah. the other three, they can improve those areas, but they're going to be there through thick and thin and that, that you know what you've got. Yeah. Then the, the, the ten out of ten that you know, you, then you know you might get three or four years, but they're never going to be there for the long term. Yeah. Um, so I think it's going to change the way people appreciate having a role in Australia. I think jobs, when you've got un unemployment at under 5%, anybody can leave a job and come back and take it. Mm. So I think people would appreciate their job. They'll take more pride in the corporation they work for. I think Australians lost that, that they weren't proud of their company, they weren't proud of their industry or anything else. Mm. They took it for granted because I can just leave and come back. And I think we're going to change and we're going to have a bit of a, a bit of loyalty and a bit more, bit more pride in what we do and, and how we do it. Mm. And I think for us, it's just, you know, I've always... You know, I, I envy that the, the Tynan brand and you know some of the other local brands you talked about in the Southern Shire. For me, it's just as I walk out the door and pass the keys to to someone else, I want that our brand grew through this and came out. And you've got three facets, though. You've got your mortgage broking. Yeah. So that seems to be just get down, knuckle down, and work through it. You've kept your yes. staff on. Yep. Isolated some, you know, working through it. Then I know you sit on a board. Has that been okay. dealt differently? Well, boards have had a lot of time to get on Zoom calls and talk about a whole lot of stuff. Right. It's, um, there's a lot more about risk mitigation because they are worried about the you know identity theft and a whole lot of other stuff. And so, that, explain that board a little bit. It's so they're not for profit. Uh, yeah, no. no, I'm involved in it. Funny enough, I'm involved in a not for profit for brain cancer as well. And we had it's it's, it's hit not for profits for six. And I think it's going to. Yes. As you, you've, they're going to have trouble getting any events done between now and Christmas. That's exactly. Um, right. Well, they have they have decisions to make whether to. You know, get on board with the job keeper, yeah. And there is a government cut for them that they can take advantage of and look at how they're going to go forward. Because don't forget, we've had the bushfires, we've had yeah. everything else where they've been asked for money, and now people are losing their jobs. Yeah. So that's a big thing to be asking for money for charity. 100. And they have to decide, you know, that they have be committed to these events if yeah. they are going to have them, and when are they going to happen? We've also got to look at, um, as I said, I'm in, I'm in a, um, a financial technology company, and I'm, you know, I, it's very much on the on the risk the risk side of that, um, and that's a startup, but that's a business that's been, you know, right place, waiting for the right time. It's, a, it's um, so now that they're they're remote and they're online and they've got that. That's the, these sort of times of all of a sudden you've you've been in the right place, and this this COVID happens, and your business model actually suits it. So I think a lot of these online businesses that have been um, been waiting, they've actually become very relevant. Mm, um, mm. The ones that were irrelevant or the ones that, you know, that were, uh, you know, marginal won't, won't survive. And, you know, in the hospitality, as I said, I'm involved in, um, in the hospitality industry as, as an owner there. And I think that, I think that's going to be a really big problem. It employs lots of part-time employees, kids at, a, um, at university. It's got a lot of professionals that are actually there, hospos. Mm. It's got a lot of people that are like on, um, you know, four, five, seven visas that are, been yeah, here for five been, years yes, uh, right. and they they don't you know they don't, they, qualify. They, they don't qualify so we're not looking at someone that's been here for six six months and they're hanging around bondi beach they're looking at people that are actually qualified chefs and everything else that are going to have to leave the country eventually because if they there's if you go, if unemployment's going to get to 10 percent north of 10 percent at some stage um how are they going to make money how are they going to earn money how are they going to qualify for anything um, so well, it depends gonna, when they open up the borders too whether they yeah. can even get home it was proven on anzac day right around the Shire and St George and we're really everywhere, just how patriotic we really are. And when, when it gets down and we get out, we get up and start fighting again. 100%. I mean, you eight know, or nine the kids. Are. It was, was, was pretty emotional to see people standing up on Gannon's Road with their, um, with their candles. And mm. uh, it was actually a different sort of Anzac Day. It wasn't one where everybody just got obliterated. It was one where we remember what was done and you'd watch TV and oh, see some totally. of the stories. And totally. it, was, uh, it was actually, it was pretty emotional. It was a, it was a good day and it made you, made you feel proud to be yeah. what this country's all. Australia will get through this because it, there's 25 million. So we're a, we're a real country now. Um, we, can common, we, we can make commentary on what the rest of the world does. We're, we're doing really well through this. We haven't gone into the winter, but you know, we've had 5,500 odd cases and I think there might be like 3,800 that are um, recovered and mm. we've had 85 deaths and a lot of the deaths have been, it's sad that they've been in a mage care and that sort mm. of stuff. Mm. Um, so a lot of you know, the people in their late, you know, late 90s and that they weren't waiting for the next big thing in life. Mm. But we're looking, at, um, we're looking at coming out of this and we're looking at that we're a real country and we're looking at what, what our values are. So the discussion is not about, you know, there's always discussions about a republic and this and arguments about infrastructure, but 
It's about who our identity is. And I think this has actually pulled everybody to Australia. It's like realising yeah. what its identity is, that we can get through anything. Yeah. We've seen the Anzac Day. We've seen COVID. And we're actually doing better than all these other countries that are meant to be smarter, better. I think so. I think one thing too, you've got two children in that 20 to 30 age group. And they're the ones that have probably been the least, um, the most affected by COVID. They, they seem to be the ones that it's where it's happening. Do you think your, your two children understand the this is just so important for our future to get this right. And do you think they'll be different 20-year-olds uh, plus coming out of this? Do you think that they'll take something out of this? Obviously, you've started your business on your own. You've worked your absolute backside off to get to where you are now. And you've used thinking right in a 360-degree program to look at this and look at that and da-da-da. Do you think your kids are going to come out of this in a different way? I hope they were pretty level-headed and they, they would have thought about others first and they would have thought about, you know, what if this didn't happen because it's all like life's sliding doors. So hopefully they had a, you know, they had a good view on the world, um, not an entitled view, um, and I'm, I know they do. They have a good view on the world. But um, I think they're going to come out of it now and realise, gee, being able to go to the pub with your mates and being able to do things that you want to do when you want to do them is a, a, is a, is a privilege, not a given. I think they're going to realise that, you know, it, it's... Maybe maybe now you can't just goof off for a year and come back and rebuild. It's um, mm. the days of jumping on a plane and just going overseas for two years might not be around for a long time and coming back to a job that's there or any other job. Mm. So maybe you're going to have to have more of a plan these days in concrete because we've had such a good run. Um, that will be different. You're going to have to have a plan. Um, as I keep saying, I said Al Adala and Molly Mook are going to be like the Greek islands for the next two years at holidays. And I think the simple holiday going up the coast, maybe, you know, the Gold Coast and Noosa are going to be things that you really enjoy doing for two weeks of the mm -hmm. year. Because I think international travel um, is going to be a slow burn to get back to those overseas holidays that people were taking all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are spending more time at the dining room table eating together and talking about things and having, a, having a chat on weekends. And there's no rugby league or AFL or anything to watch on TV. So... Um, Maybe it's back to the days of like what the 80s used to be like and, it, you know, it was, there wasn't a lot of technology, but it was actually not a bad time to live either. Yeah. Well, actually, we, we may as well talk about that. You and I both support football teams, yeah. um, Cronulla that we, we do, and I also yeah. do St George. That That's something that I've been looking at as well too, the community there that is broken um, because we don't we don't have that Saturday, Sunday, you know, watching the game and discussions at work, you know, what's happening to our local team, what's what's not happening, the netball, you know, like that's just a huge thing within the Shire. Mm. That Saturday afternoon, um, get out there and, and have a game, that's changing a lot of the way people are discussing and talking about what, what what's happening in their lives. Have yeah. you noticed that? Yeah, there's no water cooler conversations. No. Um, and, you know, the discussion on TV about footy is wearing thin, it's COVID, when are the game coming back? And, you know, I admire the NRL. They've got to have a date to get back. You've got mm. to have, like, it might not be a, you don't decide on the 27th of May you want to come back on the 28th, give or take, but you've got to have a bit of a vision. I feel sorry for some of the sports administrators because you don't expect 100% of your revenue is yeah, going to get dragged right. out of the game in one minute. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's changed the dynamic. You can't have a bit of banter. of uh, Although we're probably getting more productive because we are not discussing an hour and a half on the Sharks and what they did wrong or what they did right on the weekend? I think the ones that are going to come out of this are the ones that have got the really strong legs clubs, that the clubs are, have got some money in the bank. I think they're the ones that are going to come out um, stronger. Yeah. We might even lose a couple of teams. Um, that will be interesting to see what happens with that dynamics. But the Shire and St George are just massive, uh, you know, sports freaks. Mm. So that's changed the way we've done it as well too, I yeah. think. I think the sad thing is as well for parents who've got kids that are, you know, graduating in year 12 and it's their last year with their, mm, their yes. mates, um, yeah. you know, girls and boys, and they get to their graduation. I think we've got to start at the top and we've got to get these guys and girls back to school so they can yeah. share that experience, their last bastion of school and before they go into the real world. And I think we've got to look at that mm. psychologically. That we've got to start getting year 12 back ASAP, year 11 back and work backwards that way and have yes, a plan. Um, and teachers understand if they're scared to go back but if they don't want to go back don't go back but we need someone there mm. they have to have somewhere to go and put a you have to have a uniform to put on and somewhere to go to turn the switch on i think too you're going to find with the universities losing so much money out of their tills from overseas um, clientele and whether we get them back it's who's going to come back first because overseas students just want to get a degree yeah they don't care if it's in australia america wherever 
So they'll go to a country that they can get into first to start finishing off their degree. In particular, Wollongong University, because we work so much with them with our charity, they're one of our um, major uh, connection points there. They were advising that they wanted to get streaming into China to start doing their university's degrees, but um, the government will not allow that. But they're allowed to, vice versa, but the universities are not allowed to stream into China. Mm. So they, their courses cannot get going. You look at a Bachelor of Economics or a Bachelor of Commerce, not much has changed in the last, since 1953, but mm. they didn't have Amazon, they didn't have Google, they didn't have Twitter, they didn't have Facebook, they didn't have Instagram in those days. So maybe the curriculums need to be looked at and what happens. That's where their internships are fabulous. I don't yeah. know whether you use them, but we use them constantly. And I just find that it opens my mind to different things that are going on. Plus, they're back to them. You know, they learn that what's really life. Um, yeah. in business. You get to see it and how fast pace it can get. Well, And they can see sometimes it's not perfect. It's messy and it's mm. how you get to the end. It's like there's more than one way to get to uh, from A to B. Sometimes the quickest way is uh, straight through, but sometimes there's a few zigs and zags. So I know, it's, well, I yeah. know with my, my boys, they work full time and did university full time. Yeah. It was just a means to an end. I just want to yeah. get in, do what I have to do with my degree and tick the box so yeah. we can get starting. To and work. that's the, the big problem we're going to have. And after this, hopefully we can have conversations about you know, education and what it should look like going forward, but not now, in 50 years time, mm -hmm. we should have conversations about the tax system because everybody's saying, oh, we're borrowing, so we're borrowing a lot of money. Yeah, we have to to get through, mm -hmm. but in 40 years time, maybe that was money well spent and it's gonna be mm -hmm. stuff that was in, it, it created, it did create jobs after the COVID-19 fall that it made people think about what Australia yeah. should look like. Well, I suppose that's, I don't know whether that's something that's happening with you and you're getting asked that question. Do I pull down out of my super? Do I put it into my mortgage? What do I do? Um, and that, I find that an interesting uh, conversation to have because they, they aren't liquid either. No. Normal, all of these superannuation companies have it invested and if everyone's pulling down their super, then they're going to have to get liquid. And how that happens and how that changes your super fund that you're involved in is another story yet again. Yeah. Well, I've had plenty of young customers come to me and say, what should I do? And I said, well, look, if you don't need the money, don't take it out. Mm. Don't take 10000 out before June and 10000 afterwards if you don't need it because... One, the super funds come back by about 30%. Yes. So if you're taking 10,000, you're really taking about you know, yeah, taking 14 to 15,000 out now. Um, so if it's just to spend 10,000 on yourself, don't do it, leave it there. Because when you're young, you don't care about super. When you get to my age and your age, you start thinking, oh, that wasn't a bad idea, putting some money in super. It goes up over time. Um, I do find it interesting that industry super's got a, everybody's got a vision on that. But I think that if there's a trillion dollars in super, Mm. It should be investing, these super funds should be forced to invest some money into Australia, not just overseas all the time. So there should be some mm. charter. Mm. And I find it interesting that they're worried about people taking 10,000 out this year and 10,000 out next year because they should be liquid. Um, mm. It wouldn't be like they're selling down, selling down, you know, 30, 40% of their funds. So I do, uh, I think there's got to be some questions raised about super now because we don't want to, we don't want to in 10 years time have a disaster where no one really kept their eye on it. We're putting, you know, eight to 10% of our, our salaries into a, into a super fund. But really, there was no guidance over it. There was a whole lot of fees getting taken out of it. So we had a we had a royal commission into banking and finance, and look at our banks; they've stood up fantastically well. I think we have to have a look at the superannuation industry. You know, there's too much money at risk there for Australians that are going to need it in the next 10 to 15, 20 years. So I think we have to have a real look at that as well um, and work out what's going on there, who's running them, who sits on the boards of them. Mm. Because I think we've worked out now, boards are a great job if you want to get a packet of Tim Tams and a biscuit. They don't run the business and it's only the CEO that's accountable. Mm -hmm. So I think we really need to look at what con constitutes a board. You know, someone that was in a mining company running a mine or you know, oh, selling hard goods sitting on the board of a bank. What's, what's the skill set there these days? And same with the not-for-profits. I think that needs to looked at too. There's boards left, right and centre and, and really the not-for-profit industry needs to be re-evaluated as well too. What is a not-for-profit and how does it stand up as a real business because that's what they are? Well, there's fees coming at everywhere. They're running marketing departments. There's fees coming at everywhere. Like, you know, Cure My Brain, the one I'm involved in that I, you know, I've got a vested interest. Doesn't have, it doesn't have any um, doesn't have any fees coming out. It was run by a husband and wife. It, it's just got too big and they're going to pass over to the Chris O'Brien Lifehouse to run. But before that happens, you know, you want to know that it, almost every dollar goes back to people that need it. Oh, definitely, definitely. Not, not, to and, a, and not to a corporate office where people sit and then, you know. Well, I think you can see that with Charlie Teo's closing his down and re-establishing it because it just got too big and it, it started to just be all about um, funding the people that work for it. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's re-established and is, has taken off yet again. And I think, you know, you, I used to be one of the ones before you get involved and it was always good to go to lunch, have, you know, one too many beers and buy something and think you've done your bit for charity, but you really haven't. Then when you get involved in the charity and you do the work, yes, it becomes yes. a full-time job plus. It's yes, stressful. I well, I, back in... 
February, I think it was, early February, I contacted one of our doctors from the Medical Research Foundation asking him about an event that we were going to hold. And he, he pulled me back and said, I don't think you'll get anything done in June. This, this virus is coming, you know, like is here. And I was thinking, June, like, you know, mm. that's crazy. To his word, it's still sort of going through. I don't know whether we'll get this event up and going in June. You know, yeah, so yeah. it's going to be hard, isn't it? Well, it has to get back sooner or later because I have uh, twins due in August and a wedding due in August. So we've got to get back then. Well, it could be a cheap one if you're only allowed to have <laughs> ten people at the wedding. So it could be it could be good timing for if <laughs> exactly you, know, you might right. have to do a party afterwards. But uh, when do you think it's all going to? Um, have you got an inside word? Because I don't. No, I don't, I don't think anyone's got the inside word. I think it gets down to Australians being good Australians and hopefully containing this virus the way we are, keeping mentally healthy, um, healthy within your body so that you can look at business in a different way and hopefully look outside the square and maybe create a new business within your business or just make sure that you're looking after your staff that when you come out of this, that we're all one team. I think that's really important. Um, I don't know when it's going to end, but talking to people like you make me feel inspired to make sure that we do the right thing within the community as well. Mm. And Troy, thanks so much for no coming worries, into for us. Me, it's been really an eye opener with so many balls in the air that you've yeah, got. Yeah, we've covered a lot of ground, haven't we? We've got so much going on. I, I will say, though, I, I spoke to a very large business that said, well, we're tr keeping all our major staff on, but we're giving them a paintbrush and saying, get out there and, and paint whatever you've got to do and help whatever you can. Uh, and I think that's what we're doing within our community. And yeah, thank you cool. very much. No worries. Appreciate thank it. You.